season is finally here. I feel like we should have exchanged gifts or something. <laughs> yeah. So excited for this, right? Football is back. And after a tumultuous offseason, we finally get to talk about football. What has your focus, Rod? Well, how about my gift to you, quarterbacks? I mean, that has me fired up. You think about what we lost from last season. The stars are gone. Bradford, Clawson, Tebow, McCoy, all gone. But there's a great group of quarterbacks out there this year. Fun to watch guys like Pryor, Luck, Mallet, and many, many more. I can't wait to see some of these guys in action. Yeah, well, you're going to see one in action because Arizona has one of those top prospect kind of guys. Yeah. Nick Foles, he could have a huge year. Well, you know, everybody talks about the Pac-10 and the great quarterbacks. Backs, you know, luck and locker. This guy doesn't get mentioned as much as he should. Had a great season last year as a first year starter after transferring from Michigan State. Now he's a little bit more fundamentally sound, tough guy, like what he has in his second year of offense. I think he's going to have a great year. Well, Toledo has a playmaker as well. Statistically, Eric Page was the best freshman wide receiver in the country a year ago. Nobody caught more passes as a freshman than that young man. And he is the focal point of the Toledo offense didn't take him long wherever he is that's where you'll find the ball they line him up all over quarterback wide receiver even send him around the backfield but he is the key if he's moving the football Toledo is doing well well the student section here at Toledo called the launch pad and tonight the theme for the Rockets fans be bold wear gold we'll see how bold they are against Arizona when we return kickoff is next With the new Build Your Own Omelette from Denny's, you can choose from 19 different ingredients and become your own omelet architect. And starting at just $4.99, well, it may be the most affordable omelet architecture program in the country. Arizona and the Rockets ready to go at it here. Toledo is led by Tim Beckman, 45 years old, a coach's son, and he's been under good tutelage throughout his career under Urban Meyer, Jim Tressel, Mike Gundy as an assistant and a coordinator. As for Arizona, Rod, 2009 was a little bit of a roller coaster ride with many more highs, though, than lows. Well, they were in the Rose Bowl race late in the season. Another great season for Arizona, two back to back bowl seasons for them. All, unfortunately, the Holiday Bowl wasn't a good game for them, but this team is poised to be a Rose Bowl contender this season. Let's bring in Coach Mike Stoops. Coach, your first time back in Ohio with your Wildcats. Your crew has spent enough time this offseason being asked about that Holiday Bowl. What does it mean for your team to play a fresh game and put that memory away? Well, we put that uh, game behind us. I, I think it was a great learning experience for us. Uh, it's part of the maturation of a program, and certainly we didn't handle that situation very well. Uh, our players are anxious to get out there and redeem themselves. Hopefully we can gain uh, some national uh, respect uh, tonight. We'll see. A year ago, Nick Foles was your backup at this point. Now he's an established starter, a lot of promise. What part of his game improved the most this offseason? Well, he's a tremendous leader, first of all, and, and that's what you have to have at the quarterback position. Uh, he gained a wealth of knowledge throughout last year. Uh, he's a big-time player, and I look for him to hopefully have a big night tonight for, for us. We need him to play well. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Coach Mike Stoops, his seventh year at Arizona, back-to-back eight win seasons Arizona won the toss they deferred so Toledo will receive yeah you know, test you, you get the sense around this Arizona program that that holiday bowl is a motivating factor for them that they really have a chip on their shoulder and they want people to know that they're beyond that and they expect to win the Pac-10 this season Bonanno to kick for Arizona 
Williams and Bellinger will be back for Toledo. Last time Arizona on the field, that offense nowhere to be found. Now a fresh start to a fresh season. Here's Bonanno's kick, going to be into the end zone. And Williams will just take a knee for the touchback. So Austin Danton started three games last year in place of the injured Aaron Opelt, a very smart young man, Rod. He grew up in Florida, but he's felt right at home here in Toledo. Did not secure that starting job, though, until this fall camp. Although he carried himself as the leader all season long, you mentioned what a bright young man he is. He's an engineering student following in the footsteps of his parents, who are both engineers. Williams will line up in the backfield with him as late to come on the field for the first play on offense of the year is Adonis Thomas fine looking junior running back is very shifty and they get it to Thomas they swing it out to him and he is wrapped up after a gain of just about three and a closer look at the Toledo offense. Well, you see at the bottom there, number nine, Danny Noble. He is a versatile guy, a matchup problem. He can play tight end and wide receiver and can take some pressure off of Eric Page. Up front, pretty good offensive line. Experienced guys at both ends out there will really help him out. Kowalski really strong in the middle. He's that leader, number 69. Williams now lines up behind Danton. That's Page. That's the one you want to watch in motion. Inside handoff goes to Williams, and it looks like Danton was a little delayed in releasing that ball. Tackled by Brooks Reed and Mana Maka Ellen. Here's the Arizona Wildcat defense. Not quite Desert Swarm, but they've got some good pass rushers up front. Ricky Elmore, Brooks Reed on the outside can really bring it off the edge. Linebacking unit is very young, inexperienced. Look for Toledo to try and take advantage of that. And in the backfield, Trevin Wade is just a ball hawk artist. Nine picks and 13 starts. So after a loss of two, it brings up a third and nine. And here is Williams, and Williams is going to come up just short of that line to make as Jake Fisher, the sophomore linebacker, who played 13 games as a true freshman, but they're going to rely on him to be a big playmaker defensively this year. But you think about the evolution of this Arizona program. They were known for defense for years. But in the last two or three years, they've become an offensive-oriented team, and their defense has just been good enough to hang on and do enough for them to win and get to those eight and five seasons. And this unit is probably a little bit less experienced than they've had in the past. So Bill Claus will come out to punt to Bug Wright. The speedy Bug Wright settled in at his 29. And it's a line drive kick that takes a bounce and rolls harmlessly out at the 31. And that'll give us our first glimpse at this much talked about Arizona offense. They are led by the junior quarterback Nick Foles who had a long and winding road to arrive at this point. He committed to rival Arizona State while in high school ended up at Michigan State then transferred to Arizona and a year ago as we detailed he was the backup until taking over in week four big guy 6'5", 245. He was homesick. You now he's warmed up in Arizona originally from Texas. Keola Antolin gets the first call of the year and he pushes ahead out to the 37 yard line tackled by Johnny Roberts. Of well, the Arizona offense, Nick Grigsby, good to see him back. He had a tough season last year, a bunch of injuries. Two years ago, a thousand yard rusher. If he's healthy, he's as good as anybody in the conference in that position. A veteran offensive line, all starters back for them. Grigsby now comes in and joins Antolin in that backfield. Foles out of the gun on second and five. Foles quickly and good enough for a first down. Closer look at that Toledo defense. Well, you want to keep your eye on Alex Johnson up front. He really brings it off the edge. He's a key to that defense. And then when you start looking around at the linebackers, Archie Donald, he is the big-time player for them, has been an all-conference player for three seasons in a row. Byron Best, a very good corner on the left side. David Douglas with that first down reception for Foles. That's his roommate.
Plenty of options, and he gets it to Kreiner. And another first down toss and catch as Jerron Kreiner, a big target at 6'4", 210, goes for 12 yards. You know, Tess, they run this spread offense, but it's Taylor for Foles. Foles is not an option running quarterback. He's a guy that can really throw it down the field. He can get under center and hand off. He does that, but they, by and large, like to be in the shotgun for him and give him some time to get rid of the football, and he gets rid of it quickly. It's a pass on first down. Gets it out to Antolin, and he charges ahead for a gain of just over eight yards. Antolin, who took over the starting role last season when Grigsby was injured. Very consistent running back. Well, there's, there's the guy. He, he's the guy that can make this team a big play offense. Rigsby gets the call, and he is wrapped up right away by Alex Johnson. Three-year starter. He's had a solid career, overcoming a knee injury in the last game of last season. Now he's back healthy. A couple of years ago, Arizona ran the ball down Toledo's throat. Toledo is determined not to let that happen. You see them bringing a number of guys to the point of attack and a great explosion by Alex Johnson from left to right. So third and two as Grigsby lines up in the backfield. That's Kreiner in motion. Grigsby has got the first down. Good hard charging running by the senior running back. A couple years ago, he played against Toledo. He went for 135 yards and three touchdowns. Yeah, what, what about the first half he had against them? And he opened the game playing great, but since since 2008, he's been banged up with a shoulder injury, hamstring injury, didn't, didn't practice a lot in the spring, missed a lot of that. Antolin now comes on fresh set of downs as this Arizona offense is moving with ease. And this is complete to Kreiner. And he has it marked out at the 11-yard line. A 20-yard pitch and catch as Byron Best was able to finally run him down. First down, Arizona. Just a very easy pace so far for Nick Foles and the Wildcats. Yeah, very comfortable, in rhythm, taking his time, delivering the ball on the money. The accuracy has been there. Douglas and Kreiner to the top as Antolin, the lone back. Reset the play clock to 25 seconds. Clock, game clock will start on the ready. You know, Tess, we talk about accuracy for Foles. You can see it when guys don't break stride when they catch the ball. They are running as if it's a long handoff, and that accuracy makes the difference. You see that improvement from him from last year. Guys aren't jumping around and turning around. They're just running. Coach has talked about how much more comfortable he is with this offense. Settling in nicely. Here's Keola. Still grinding down to the nine. You mentioned this nice, easy rhythm and pace Arizona has. Part of that, I'm sure, that deliberate nature has to do with that young, inexperienced defense. Stay on the field offensively. They can make a first down at the one-yard line. Of course, they want the seven. Antolin. Instead, he goes to the back of the end zone. Touchdown, Wildcats, David Douglas. He gave a look to Antolin to the top, went to the back of the end zone to Douglas, and a near-perfect start for Nick Foles and this Arizona offense. The back of the end zone is the area that is rarely covered. That's why if your quarterback can drop it in there, you got a chance to really do some good things. No one covers the back of the end zone. They're going to take a look 
at this catch by David Douglas. I told you he is the best friend and roommate of Nick Foles. Foles on that drive of this stands five for five 58 yards yeah. and a touchdown pass. Yeah pretty good and that throw was pretty good. You want to dare quarterbacks to be able to make that kind of a throw in the red zone to see if they can actually get that ball in. Now, let's watch his feet here. Does he catch the ball and get that foot in. He's got the ball. He's got one foot in. All you need is one foot in college football and that right foot was down. And the field is confirmed. Possession. Touchdown. Yeah, undoubtedly, as Douglas was able to stab that right foot down for the touchdown stands. David Douglas and Nick Foles hooking up here. How about that throw? Beautiful throw. <laughs> you really do see the development with Foles. And you know what? And I'm sure we'll talk about it as the night goes on. But what a difference it makes to get out there after what happened against Nebraska and just get on that scoreboard. Alex Zendejas tacks on the extra point. The nine-yard touchdown. Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. And Best Buy. Get the best on the web on your TV. Best Buy. Buyer be happy. 90,000 square foot Fetterman Training Center. They opened it this year here at Toledo. Nine million bucks gives you a hundred yard football field nowadays, Rod. Beautiful. I visited with athletic director Mike O'Brien and he said, hey, that's the kind of supports what you need for Coach Tim Beckman is take those steps forward. Uh, that's part of building a program and getting it to the next level facilities. And we're seeing it all across the country with the arms race, facilities race. Folks spending more money on facilities. Now, speaking of arms, look who's back. Nick Foles. He has started his night five for five with a touchdown pass. Took a quick look to the near side and then gets it to Dave Roberts. Well, let's check in with Reese Davis. Hello, RD. under center now it's second and five and that is a good effort to haul it in Jerron Kreiner now oh, that's going to be incomplete but he went diving out of bounds he was covered by Byron Best and it shows you a bit of the athleticism of Kreiner yeah you know if I'm playing corner and I feel this out route and I feel the quarter the corner quarterback moving my way I know the receiver can only run an out route or a deep route that's it because the quarterback's moving that way. He can't throw back across his body. Bass was close enough, but could have been tighter on that, and the clearly not in bounds yet. Good call by the official. It was almost a sensational play by Kreiner. Instead, it goes down as the first incompletion of the night for Foles. Third and five now. Antolin coming up and making a good, solid stick was Desmond Morrow. It is good to see Desmond Morrow back out there. A couple of years ago, he was a really good corner, all Mac performer, but then a knee injury sidelined him for a couple of years. You know, he went to the same high school as the Stoops brothers, Cardinal Mooney in Youngstown, Ohio. There's a homecoming for you. I think he saw Stoops over the summer. He, he, he saw him and said, hey, I, we know we play this year, and Stoops said, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's arrived, and so has Morrow. Won a state title at Cardinal Mooney. Keenan Cryer to punt as the whistles come in. Delay a game. Offense number 47. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. So they'll be backed up even further. It's the first flag of the night so far. You know, Tess, as, as we looked at the Arizona offense this offseason, the one thing that we saw as an issue is that they didn't make enough big plays down the field. And you see that last set, last series, Toledo kind of honing in on short routes and daring them to throw the ball down the field. Friars punt. Page looking to field it at about the 35, and they were all over him. Eric Page just swarmed under, but the defense did their job. Oh. 
Toledo facing a second and 13 here. Danton going to keep it himself and run straight up the middle to the 49 yard line as DeAndre Reed was able to get to him. You know, Tess, as we get into the fantasy football thing, it's great, and we get some great games to watch all year long, including this weekend. Some great games. Here on third and 11, Antolin Dangerous. is going to join Scott out of the gun to pass from his own end zone, scrambling around. Running room now, straight up the middle, fighting for that first down, and it will depend on the spot, but what an effort by Matt Scott. Flag did come in. Boy, if that's a holding back in the end zone, Rod. Yeah, if there's holding in the end zone, then that's a safety. Holding. Offense uh -oh. number 55. Haley occurred in the end zone. By rule is a safety. Put a two on the board. Sweet. Scott was scrambling around, and somebody had a hang on. Toledo defense came to play with that great field position. Watch Johnny Roberts on the inside. Yeah, just look to the where 94 is being blocked. He's being blocked by 55. I mean, to Anuga, who is the man who just takes him down. 55 to the left of your screen, right there. Tuni just about grabs him, tackles him. That's two points. Mike Stoops justifiably ticked off. Well, that big punt put Arizona in a deep hole. John Penza pinned the team, and then the defense got aggressive. Well, the test, I think it's fair to question taking Foles out and bringing in Scott when you're backed up like that. I think that's a fair point to look at as to why you do that with your all-conference or a potential all-conference quarterback. Yeah, you want to run the ball, but now you signal to the defense, we're not going to throw it. Now, they were quick to tell us the other day that Matt Scott had had his best fall camp by far, that they can win with Matt Scott, and situationally, they will play him. Yep. They chose an interesting time to do that. Yep, eight out of nine, 77 yards, and Toledo wasn't buying the notion that Matt Scott was going to throw the football. They came after them to stop the run. Fryer takes it back to the 18. Bellinger is wrapped up at the 32-yard line. The college football on ABC, the regional windows tomorrow. UConn against Michigan. College football presented by Buffalo Wild Wings, part of Dick Sporting Goods kickoff week, Saturday, 3.30 on ABC. You can also see UCLA, Kansas State, or go to ESPN.com and search maps for the game that you will get in your area. A lot of folks think that Randy Edsel's team can pull it off in the big house. A lot of people don't know how good UConn is, but Kirk Herbstreit does. Hey, remember what UConn did in a bowl game last year to South Carolina. Yeah. Look at the South Carolina team you saw last night. Uh, Herbie picked them to win the Big East. It's Page in motion as Danton works out of the gun. Delayed inside handoff to Williams. Williams trying to get to that edge, but he is brought down by Ricky Elmore. So the safety on the board for Toledo and Mike Stoops' reaction to his team walking off the field. Well, that's the safety, and he was not a happy camper. Can't blame him for that. That's two points on the board. Holding call in the end zone. Page now coming into the backfield as they will get it over to Eric Page. Picks up a block and Page dives forward to the 39-yard line. Anthony Wilcox was able to get to him. Well, Arizona's done a nice job of containing Eric Page. And they've made sure that they've had a couple of guys in his area. Double coverage, short and long, in and out making Toledo go elsewhere for their offense. Just two receptions for 11 yards for the player who was statistically the best freshman receiver in the country. Fluellen now, and he is wrapped up. David Fluellen, the true freshman from New York, taken down by Ricky Elmore. 
You know, getting back to Page, the other thing that's an issue for him is that when he's locked up in man coverage, he's got Trevin Wade out there. And Wade is athletically, I think, superior than Page. He's faster, he's quick, and so he's able to handle him on those short routes where usually Page has an advantage. Well, here's the best scoring weapon for Toledo so far tonight. The leg of John Penza, the punter. Had a 55-yard punt last time that set up that defensive stand for the safety. But right inside his own 10. And once again, poor field position for Arizona. 51-yard punt. Toledo's Tim Beckman says, I'll take two. I'll take it any way I can get it. A 7-2 ball game here at the Glass Bowl. Sandwich lady, 2 o'clock. Oh. oh. Hey. 550. Actually, we're all good today, sandwich lady. We love your chicken sandwiches, but Taco Bell's got chicken flatbread sandwiches for under a buck. So... 550. No, 550. Under a buck. You don't scare me. It's under a buck, and not everyone's happy about it. The new chicken flatbread sandwich. Warm flatbread, flame grilled chicken, and melty cheese. Only at Taco Bell. Why pay more? The Birkenfield QR76 binoculars. Perfect for those who didn't buy their tickets on StubHub. For 10 years, StubHub has been the place to find great tickets to sports, concerts, and more. StubHub, where do you want to sit? Let me show you how to be a top cornerback. Use those Nike Zoom Vapor Carbon Fly cleats to cover your man like shade. And use those Nike Vapor Jet gloves to bear your man in coverage. Now that you got that receiver on your island, you can keep him there for the whole game. But make sure you name your island. They call mine Revis. What's your last name? Gilligan. The Nike Vapor Carbon Cleat and Vapor Jet Glove at Dick Sporting Goods. Better athlete, better team. There's a better way to fight flakes. New Garnier Fructis Anti-Dandruff Shampoo. Fights flakes for 48 hours, guaranteed. Professionals need to perform under pressure. And pressure can cause anyone's deodorant to fail. Introducing Gillette Odor Shield Antiperspirant. Unlike regular deodorants, it targets and neutralizes odor at the source. Help eliminate odor, don't just cover it up. Odor Shield Antiperspirant. Also try Odor Shield technology and new body wash. You're watching ESPN, new home of the Bowl Championship Series. Celebrating its six years sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets, Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. To date, they've contributed more than $2.1 million in scholarship monies. Field goals and extra points, but what about that run? What about a safety? Hey, it's not my money. Okay, let's do it. I throw it in there. At least for two-thirds of it. Great people at Allstate. And we got a low-scoring one here. Nick Foles out of the gun here from their nine. Remember, the last drive resulted in a safety. It started at the four as he quickly swings it out to Anselin, who is met right away by Jermaine Robinson. And remember, Taz, special teams have really played a difference. Those The last two drives for Arizona, starting from their own four and nine, because of great hunting. Arizona has not had a first down since that touchdown drive. Full start of the night, five for five, was looking sensational. Hooked up with David Douglas. Foles over the middle. That is complete to the 13-yard line as he is able to find Dave Roberts. Arizona needs to find some field position so they can open up the offense, try and take some shots down the field. They haven't taken one shot down the field all night. Part of that's field position, and the early part was trying to get a rhythm. But they have to try and get more big plays out of their offense. That was the trouble at times last season. Third in the Pac-10 last season, 225 passing yards a game. 
Here's Kreiner. And Kreiner trying to stretch out for that first down. Jerron Kreiner had nine touchdown catches a year ago, and he is the big target this year. That's supposed to make this offense go. Yeah, if you remember that Oregon game? Boy, did he have a big game. Three touchdowns, Oregon. right? Oh, yeah. Huge, big play. You know what was funny with him, though? He had that big game against Stanford, went for a buck 50. He had the three touchdowns against Oregon. But the other games, he was somewhat of a non-factor. In six games, he was held to 20 yards or less. Yeah. Some receivers need to get the ball early in the ball game to get going. If you don't get it to them early, they, they never quite get going. Flag comes in. Offside, defense number 97 with contact. Five yard penalty, first down. Remember how the 49ers just talk about Jerry Rice and the need to have him touch the ball early in the ball game so that he would be really into it and play well and have big games. And most teams tried to take him out early in the ball game. Kreiner, the guy who had big games when you got him early. There are the coordinators for Arizona. They have enough coordinators to go around. They have two offensive and two defensive coordinators, plus Frank Selfo, the quarterback coach, who's as accomplished as any offensive mind in the game. Buck Wright. And Buck Wright surges forward to the 30 and a first down. Foles is 12 of 13. It, you talk about that group of uh, coaches. Well, ESPN the magazine is doing an article on these guys and how many coaches it takes. Five coaches and a quarterback weigh in every single play on what they ought to do. That's actually the new ESPN the magazine. And that's available this coming week. They're doing a feature story on how it is that Arizona deals with having these five minds getting in with every play. Yeah. Grigsby now. And Nick Grigsby, a good spin move by Grigsby. And he's out to the 45-yard line. So a burst of offense by Grigsby before Desmond Morrow took him down, but a 14-yard gain. Yeah, that's what was missing last season. Big plays from the line of scrimmage, from the backfield. Grigsby can give you that. He's a home run hitter when he's healthy. He wasn't healthy last season. And nice spin move. Oh, yeah. Right. But the Arizona offense needs that component. They have to get big plays. Low snap, pressure up the middle, falls, tied up, but gets it loose, but overthrows the intended receiver. Bud Wright was open in the center middle of that defensive backfield, but there was pressure on Foles. He couldn't set his feet. He, he moved up in the pocket, but he just didn't have enough room to get comfortable, and he threw that ball behind Wright. Now take a look at his feet. Now watch as he steps up. Now he doesn't have enough and can't really step and stride into it, so he throws his ball off target behind his uh, intended receiver. And Frank Selfo has really been working with him on that. Second down now. And right to the 50-yard line. Tackled by Jermaine Robinson, who started every game last year as a true freshman. And the blonde locks of Nick Foles. <laughs> Trying to come up with something here on third and five. And it's right in motion. Rigsby in the backfield. Line to make is the 45, and the whistle will put a stop to this. Offside, number three, defense with contact, five-yard penalty. Doesn't work out well on third and five. The NASCAR Sprint Cup Series heads back south Labor Day weekend. Only two races remain for Jamie McMurray and Mark Martin to get off that bubble and get themselves into that chase. It's the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Atlanta, Sunday at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. <laughs> Trying to outdo the other mascot, he is the Rocket. So a fresh set of downs now for Foles after the penalty against Toledo. Here's Kreiner. And Kreiner forced out of bounds at the 36 
by Desmond Morrow. His fifth catch of the night. With the it's like Kreiner missed some time, Rod. Remember we talked about him missing some time in camp? Yep. Had that concussion, laceration in his mouth. Actually, a tooth went through his lip. Helmet came off. He needed some dental work. Not a nice way to spend your dog days of summer. He got hit by a teammate. I think it was Robert Golden who gave him the lick. And here is Grigsby. And Grigsby trying to get to that corner. Makes a man miss and goes into the end zone. Nick Grigsby with a 36-yard touchdown run. And test big plays. That's what we've been talking about for this offense. That play was only designed to get a few yards. But a guy like Grigsby, who has great moves, great anticipation, and can really cut, stick his foot in the ground and go the other way, can make big plays. Prior to that run, Arizona only had a yard rushing in this game. Nick Grigsby changed that in quick order. Alex Zendejas adds the extra point. A 91-yard drive capped by the senior Nick Grigsby. Tearing up 36 years, putting a move on Byron Best. Nicely done, 14 to 2, Zona. The University of Transformation. Opportunity. Leadership. The University of Environment. Development and optimum quality of life. The University of Toledo. Higher education has never been more relevant. Built on the frontier of America, in a place unique on the planet. It's a place where tradition and innovation thrive, where a new frontier of ideas is being created, where the future is as bold and as brilliant as the past. It is a place like no other. It is the University of Arizona. I'm Reese Davis coming up on the Olive Garden Halftime Report. Apparently the governor's been working the phones and giving stays of execution right and left. A couple of Tar Heels will now be available against LSU. The previously were thought suspended. Jeremiah Masoli can go. And Todd McShay will tell you the players that you ought to watch this weekend. Mark and Lou will join me coming up in just a little bit, Jill. Well, that helps the cause, Reese, for North Carolina because that defense with those suspensions just decimated heading into that LSU game. And Jeremiah Masoli winning his appeal. He's going to be suiting up for Ole Miss. Of course, it was a year ago that Masoli was in the Pac-10 with these Wildcats. Arizona now leading 14-2 to as Nick Grigsby has put them up by 12. It was a holding call in the end zone that has given us this odd score. Safety for Toledo, their only points of the game as Morgan Williams back to receive John Bonanno's kickoff. And a squib kick. This is taken by Bellinger. Going to the entire other side of the field and then reversing field looking for a block. Bellinger. Boy, he's gone about 50 yards and only gained about four. Trevor Erno trapped him eventually. Hey, Tess, let's go back to the touchdown. A defense can't over-pursue. Watch how Grigsby takes advantage of that. He gets to the second level. Now look at where all the guys are. They're heading in the wrong direction, over-pursuing what's happening here. Grigsby feels it and then cuts back to the right side because the defense over-pursued, got out of their lanes. Put a great move on Byron Best there, too. <laughs> oh, oh, man, was that something? Yeah, you see it. So we'll see if Toledo can respond here after Foles and company came down 91 yards, capped by Grigsby. Danton with time. That ball is intercepted. Derek Earls, a flag comes down. Earls inside the 10, and the Juco transfer from North Dakota State 
comes up with a big play here. We'll see if it stays. 22-yard return by Earls. During the return, illegal block in the back. Number 41 of the intercepting team. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. So Arizona will take the ball, but they get pushed back a bit. But that's the kind of effort they're looking for out of Derek Earls. Oh, what a great athletic play. Watch the one-handed stab by a linebacker. I mean, Earls uses that left paw to knock the ball up in the air. It's a great play. Did you see who it was who laid a shoulder into Derek Earls when he got inside that 10-yard line? Had to be the quarterback, Danton. Austin Danton. Yep. Watch the starting quarterback come in here. Nick Foles now with prime real estate starting this drive. And here's Keola Antolin and Antolin to the 30-yard line. Archie Donald, we haven't called his name much, the senior linebacker stepping up to make that tackle, but you get the sense my Uncle Mo has come to Arizona right now. Some momentum since they got out of that poor field position with that 91-yard drive, and now the big turnover here, trying to add to it with just over two minutes to go in this half. Foles, plenty of time. Kreiner to the edge, a first down, and steps out at the 21. Does anybody have longer hair in college football than Antolin? No, there's some locks from Foles, not quite as long as no, no, yeah, Antolin. He, no, you can't even see his jersey number. <laughs> he, he's almost covering the entire. No, he's only two. five foot eight. Uh, that's pretty good. I don't think that's quite as well. Bison Bernie, the third string quarterback from Honolulu, been in this program for three years. Real likable guy. Foles now. Was able to get it to Travis Cobb. But a good defensive play by Ballard. Well, that's one play by Grigsby quieted this crowd. That one play showed so much athleticism, superior speed, and quickness. It, it kind of stunned the crowd. They were right hanging in there until that happened. Some motion. Ball start, 19 on the offense. Five yard penalty, remain second down. for a second and eight now from the 18. Foles, here comes the blitz. And pressure off the edge from Alex Johnson. He got free. A flag comes in, and he just smothered Nick Foles. He was offside. That's why. Yeah. He, he jumped the count. He tried to anticipate it. Offside, defense number 40. Five-yard penalty, second down. Easy to do when you get that head start. Yeah, yeah he had a running start. And just watch the right side. Watch him come. One, two. Hey, he's, he's gone. Tried to time the it, but he tried to time that snap. It. I mean, Grant never had a shot. Yeah, the left tackle, Adam Grant, was just jogging behind him saying, how did you get there so fast? <laughs> so four critical offsides penalties on Toledo tonight. Clock counting down here. Foles, plenty of time over the middle and trying to get towards that goal line was big David Douglas. Remember, he had the touchdown earlier. So 26 Douglas. seconds remain in the half, and you see Mike Stoops saying, all right, we will use a timeout. It started well for Arizona as Foles was 5 for 5 on that opening drive. And then Toledo settled in a bit, started playing some strong defense and really yeah. special teams creating a field position yeah. opportunity. We had the holding 
in the end zone that got them on the board with the safety. But then Foles comes back on the field, poor field position, yeah. and acts like the veteran, leader, confident quarterback that he's supposed to be yeah. and the 91 yard drive capped well, by Grigsby. That's why I couldn't understand why they took him out when they were backed up on the four yard line. I mean, he's a veteran quarterback and I thought they needed to have him in there and they almost got in trouble in this ball game because they had the safety and then they got kind of out of sorts there. So I, I think that was a mistake and they didn't come back and do that after that. I, I think he's a really special player and has a chance to be really, really good this season. Yeah, remember the safety was not on him. It was Matt Scott who was in at quarterback when the holding call happened. Foles is 18 of 20, 151, and a touchdown without a turnover. Keola Antolin in the backfield now. Foles to the air. Incomplete. Tried to get it to Kreiner on the fade. The coverage came from Byron Best. Kreiner, by the way, 6'4. Best is 5'9. A little bit of an advantage. Well, especially when you get down here inside the 20, there's not a lot of room. You can play jump ball, and Kreiner has a big advantage in that situation. He's just posting up best. Sort of like an entry pass in basketball. Going to have a timeout here. Timeout. As Toledo. Coach Beckman Their first time out of the half, wants to talk things over timeout. defensively. Well, Nick Foles just one of a good group of Pac-10 quarterbacks this season. Yeah, we talked about some of the great quarterbacks across the country, and the Pac-10 is really loaded. How about what Matt Barkley did last night in Hawaii? He looked fantastic. Andrew Luck at Stanford, poised for a great season. Jake Locker has really, really improved as a quarterback under Steve Sarkeesian. Now so improved as a pocket passer that people are talking about him maybe being the first pick in the draft next year. You know, not of that group. Foles is the only guy that last season had a completion percentage over 16%. We told you he's on fire with his completion percentage here tonight. Yeah. You know, a couple of years ago, uh, the Pac-10 was a running back conference. It was dominated by great running backs. The trend started to change last season, and it is clearly a quarterback conference now. Yeah, Matt Barkley got off to a pretty oh, good start last are night. Are you kidding me? Five touchdowns. Uh, he's unbelievable. He looked fantastic last night. Can't say that about the USC defense. Antolin, the lone back. Foles is going to try to run it himself, and Nick Foles brings it in. Well, raving about his arm. A little dance for six with the feet. It was all set up by that interception from Derek Earls. And then Foles puts six on the board. He is about 245 pounds, so not an easy guy to bring down with a little head of steam. Alex Zendejas with his third extra point of the night. Alongside Rod Gilmore, I'm Joe Tessitore here on a beautiful, mild night in Toledo. Arizona is up 21 to 2. Developed into a very nice evening for the junior quarterback, Nick Foles, tonight. Yeah, but take a look at what we see on this passing chart. Nothing down the field, nothing over 15 yards. Everything is a short throw. And he's very accurate. But this is the same issue they had last season when they didn't get the ball down the field. They were among the bottom 20 teams in terms of passing plays over 25 yards bottom 20 teams and he can get the ball down the field maybe they don't have to get it done tonight but they will during the season third and six here's Kreiner a first down by Kreiner and he spins inside the 20. Full says that Kreiner is the kind of guy that's a product of confidence the more you get him the ball the better he will do that has been the case with Kreiner tonight well, he's played with some toughness. He's made short catches, seven for 84 yards, you know, taking the tough hit when he's had to. So he's just not a guy who's going to run down the field. He's a good, solid receiver. Quickly gets it out to Grigsby. And Grigsby is forced out by Desmond Morrow. 
Now, all these short passes are fine, and they're working out. But remember, in the Holiday Bowl, they could not do this. Nebraska, with their very aggressive defense, challenged all the short passes that they had, and they dared them to throw the ball down the field. And with that defensive line, they just disrupted Arizona. And Arizona didn't play well that night either. Happen to have probably the best defensive player in the last 20 years of college you, football, opposite. You, opposite th you, think, you think? You <laughs> think? Foles. Close to the goal line to Dave Roberts, but going to be just short. Just inside the one. But what a nice strike by Nick Foles. And a nice job by Roberts. Watch his hand. He has to come back a little bit for this ball. Nicely done with his hands. Watch Roberts at the end of this thing. Reaching up high, a little bit behind him, coming up with that ball. That's a great catch. Mark Singer put a lick on him that kept him out of the end zone. Rigsby in with ease and this Arizona offense like a hot knife through cold butter here in the Midwest they have come to Mac country and they are in control uh, it seems like they woke up after that safety which made the score seven to two since then Arizona has just gone on a run second rushing touchdown of the night for Grigsby Arizona three touchdowns in the last three possessions coming up we are going to storm the dorm the frat boys here at Toledo are firing off their famed cannon the story behind the Rockets big gun when we return stay with us on the Friday primetime Twenty eight two Zona it is time to storm the dorm each week our chance to uncover on campus atmosphere and traditions here at Toledo we storm Pi Kappa Phi frat president Paul Webb explains it all. Thanks Joan Rod this is the Pi Cap house where we keep the Pi Cap cannon we've had this cannon since 1966 where we keep it nice and polished up for game day. This cannon is brand new, just got it two days ago. On game day, we wheel it down to the field where we shoot it off every time there's a rocket touchdown. Hope to hear a lot of the cannon tonight. And one, two, one, two, three, four, you are the Eagles. And I'm for you. There is the cannon that they brought down from Pi Kappa Phi. Problem is, they set it off before the game and at halftime, they need some touchdowns. Get that thing going, right? I've heard nothing, nothing for a long time now. Next week, we will storm the dorm at Marshall, West Virginia, coming to town in that rivalry game. Eric Page. And Page just dives forward out to the 24. Well, Rod, what is the answer for this Toledo offense? Well, clearly, the Arizona defense, with their speed, they've taken away the two big playmakers that they have. They can't get the ball to Page or Noble. Now, you got to find a way. You got to move Page around, maybe get him in that wildcat. You got to do something to get him some touches, and you have to find a way to get the ball to Noble. They're just taking those two guys away, and you cannot let that happen. You got to find a way to get them touches. Williams he is stacked up by Brooks Reed he was getting a lot of hype going into last year then had that injury very athletic defensive end had eight and a half sacks when he was a sophomore he was at a hundred percent health back then but had an ankle injury last year that slowed him significantly Williams again and this time he is wrapped up again that was Mana Mika LA LSU 
LSU and North Carolina in the Chick-fil-A kickoff game, the 2010 Chick-fil-A kickoff game presented by Southwest Airlines, part of Dick's Sporting Goods. Kickoff week Saturday at 8 Eastern on ABC. And the good news for Carolina, they're getting a couple of those defensive players back. Boy, I'll tell you, the offseason for North Carolina, they're taking that thing right up until kickoff with all the controversy and breaking news. Eric Page now a first down for Toledo but the big story today was they were losing all the defensive starters now it appears a couple of the guys will be able to play tomorrow but all our ESPN reporters Bruce Feldman Joe Shad they're blowing up Twitter yeah. every second of the day yeah. on this North Carolina story like crazy because who's in who's out it's changing constantly and now it looks like what seven defensive starters out and a couple of running backs you know it, it's it's a second and third team affair for North Carolina tomorrow. And you got to think all those distractions in a game week is such a critical game against LSU. Will that have his toll? Fresh set of downs for Danton. Thomas now. And Adonis Thomas to the 44. You know what I would do for my North Carolina defense second stringers and third stringers? Do? I'd coach them up. I'd say, you know what? We're going to play very simple, basic coverages, uh, blitz a little bit. Very vanilla. I want you guys to go play and have fun. All the pressure, all the pressure's on LSU. Oh, everybody expects uh, yeah, LSU to They're supposed to blow us out. We're just going to go run around, have fun, and hit somebody. Well, that's what I would do. Thomas trying to get to that first down yardage, and he does. As he was ridden down by Paul Basalo. And Toledo finally has 100 yards of offense tonight. It comes with eight and a half minutes to go here in the third. Well, you see they're trying to find a way to get the ball to the playmakers. They've gotten it over to Page. Now they just got to get Noble involved and get, get it to him. There's Noble. Shifting positions again they go with Thomas and he finds a nice hole on the left side and he's still on his feet to the 35 so Adonis Thomas offering up a spark of offense he was pushing Williams for playing time in camp gives him a little bit of depth at the running back position uh, they attack the side where Noble lined up gave a nice little block out there but it was the inside blocking that worked there for Williams. Williams found that lane. So after the 17 yard gain, Williams now comes in. And Williams is written down in the middle of that defensive line. DeAndre Reed. Another tackle for Reed. I'm impressed with the Arizona defensive front and the speed in their secondary. Well, they're going to need that when they get into Pac-10 play. Oh, no doubt. They're going to be facing some tremendous passing offenses, and you're going to have to put pressure on guys like. Andrew Luck and Jake Locker and Matt Barkley. Well, the team that can play a little defense will win the Pac-10. Dan, ball is Ooh. tip, falls incomplete. Who is that team? Well, when you size up the Pac-10, who has good defense? Well, that's the question. Now, I really believe that the Oregon Ducks are going to play good defense. Veteran team coming back. I think they're going to be good defensively. I think Oregon State will play good defense. I think Stanford will be improved. I know UCLA plays good defense, but UCLA has trouble scoring. This Arizona team is starting to show that even though they're young and inexperienced, they've got the speed and the ability to play good defense. I think Arizona will be in the hunt this season. Third and seven for Austin Danton and company. Pressure. He gets it off the page. First down and Page. The ball comes loose. Can you believe that? Right at the end of that play, the ball pops loose and goes into the hands. That's a fumble. Looked like Joe Perkins just scooped that ball up. Trevin Wade was down there defensively, and then Perkins gets it. Now, does Wade pop it out? Well, now the question is, was he out of bounds? And what about the ground, too? Yeah, I mean, if he's out of bounds, this play is down, and that ball, yeah, that, that can't be a fumble there. He's down and out of bounds, and that ball pops up. Watch the left elbow. The left elbow 
hits the ground out of bounds. And now it pops up. Well, they're going to need indisputable video evidence, and I think they may have it here to overturn the call on the field. That was a 24-yard gain to the Arizona 8. Previous, the previous play is under further review. We will take a break as they take a look. Will the turnover stand, or will Toledo be knocking on the door? Hello, friends. We have an injury report on Jason Glaspie. As you can see, his girlfriend has removed his spine, rendering him incapable of watching the game. Come on, silly. Boy, that's hard to watch. How about lavender? How about not? Jason, get yourself the Flow TV personal television. It's live mobile TV, so now live sports goes where you go. Change out of that skirt, Jason. Visit flowtv.com for special offers. Hey guys, I got a pop quiz for you. It's called, What Did I Do This Summer? I bet all y'all was at the pool party. Doing your little dance, getting y'all jig on, huh? Yeah. Yeah. You know what moves I made? Lateral ones on the training field. Y'all know it sucks more than training? Losing. You know it sucks more than losing? Nothing. Now that's right, Hercules. Nothing. Damn! Absence makes the roster grow weaker. Manage your teams everywhere, all the time. Sign up for free at ESPN.com. Do a little dance over to the Men's Warehouse Labor Day Sale. For the first time ever, you can buy one, get one free on all suits, shirts, slacks, shoes, designer jeans. Sale ends Monday. You're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. This is a public announcement. CNNMoney.com reports that in some areas of the country, buyers are scooping up homes for as little as $1,000. Foreclosures are at an all-time high. Government and private banks are liquidating these homes now. If you currently rent a house or apartment, you may call now and learn how to receive your free list of these homes. All others may call tomorrow. Every house must be sold. This is a public announcement. Call 1-800-294-2973. That's 1-800-294-2973. Do a little dance over to the Men's Warehouse Labor Day Sale. For the first time ever, you can buy one, get one free on all suits, shirts, slacks, shoes, designer jeans. Sale ends Monday. You're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. ESPN's College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. And Wheat Thins. The Crunch is calling. The Toledo Firefighters Museum, old number 18 firehouse in memory of the fallen firefighters. Who doesn't like a good old-fashioned fire truck? Great for a parade. Isn't that something? Love it. Now, here's the guy that they need to be on fire, Eric Page. He was their hot receiver a year ago, and they did overturn this call. The knee was down, Rod, right, yeah, right there. Right there. You see it right there. Left knee down, and then the ball comes out after his elbow hits, and he's out of bounds. So they reverse that. Toledo ball. Good call. So a first and goal situation now on the eight-yard line for Toledo. Williams. Right up the middle. And Williams down to the two yard line as Ricky Elmore made the tackle there. Well, we had that storm the dorm with the beautiful brass cannon. They're waiting for a touchdown to fire that thing off. Maybe this will be the point. If so, get earplugs ready. Williams again. Nothing doing at all. Ricky Elmore all over him. Oh, they're, they're ready. <laughs> they got the big headsets on. <laughs> uh, they may have acted too soon, though. Arizona anticipating that option, read option play, and taking away Williams. And now. Don't be reaching out. for the gunpowder no, too they, soon here. They may, have to throw this. they may have to throw this bottom of the screen. Stafford's on the near side. Page is in the slot. Danton looking for his big tight end, and he overthrew him. All he had to do was reach out and meet Danny Noble with the ball, and he put it over the six foot five Danny Noble. Ah, he just got a little bit too excited. 
Noble's wide open. Watch Noble. Noble's wide open. Nobody there. Tough oh. throw on the move. He's right there. And the cannon guys say, oh, no. No. We had the hand on the, the gun trigger. Powder the gunpowder was ready. Oh. Oh, here we go. Another shot. Fourth down. Going to give it a shot. Bellinger in motion. Three to the top for Danton. Pressure comes, and that is incomplete. A lot of pressure coming from Ricky Elmore. And Austin Danton just found the turf. Well, Elmore and Brooks have been bringing pressure off the edge all night, and they silenced the cannon, kept okay. it silent. They just stepped away. Did you see how yeah. they just walked away from the cannon? Well, what are you going to do? You can't fire the cannon. You can't stand near it now. They're disgusted. They took the headsets off and everything. A 13-play drive comes up empty. And that was Shaquille Richardson coming off defensively there on that stop. And he was the big-time UCLA recruit, found some trouble before he ended up there with the Bruins and joined Arizona this August. Rigsby. Not much running room there. And it's been a strong night for Nick Grigsby. But, and, and it's good to see. I mean, you, you hate to see a guy who's had so much success then get hurt and struggle as he did last season. So it's great to see him back and healthy and performing the way he did two years ago. He thinks this is going to be a very special year. His mother, Bernice, moved to Tucson to be closer to Nick and his brother, Terrace, who's a walk-on for the Cats. Foles from his end zone directing traffic and he's able to get it to Douglas and David Douglas out to the 22 yard line. Remember he had the opening score of the night for Arizona. Flag comes in. I'm not sure he didn't step out of bounds. He may have. He looked like he was very close. And I'm talking about Douglas and not well I think before the Foles. ball got to him he yeah. may have stepped yeah, yeah, out of bounds. Yeah, legal touching. Number 85 stepping out of bounds on his own and was the first to touch a pass in bounds. Yeah, yeah you Finley can't do that. You have to reestablish yourself. Spot. Cannot Third be down. the first man to yeah. touch the ball once you've been out of bounds. Yeah, right there. Clearly out of bounds. Left foot. Right there. Arizona would love to pick this up, otherwise you're punting from deep in your own end zone. You need to get out to the 14-yard line. Foles over the middle and complete to his big tight end, A.J. Simmons. Wow, did he thread that one. I mean, Toledo sitting in a zone, they had this smelled out, but nobody had time to react to the throw because of the quick release. First catch for Simmons. It goes for 31 yards as they were backed up against their own end zone. Foles to pass again. And this time, Travis Cobb gets himself into the mix. The coverage came from Byron Best, but Nick Foles, boy, oh boy, Rod. Yeah, watch him thr thrill this. He's just going to drill this right over the linebacker, Donald, in front of the safety, soft spot of the zone, perfectly thrown ball. What did he tell us the other day? Better footwork, better balance, better decision-making, uh, and a more relaxed, fun attitude. I think that sums up his night, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. Play action. It's going to crank it up. Kreiner. Are you kidding me? I think he caught that on the way down. One handed. <laughs> Unbelievable catch by Jerron Kreiner. He was falling down and he came up with the ball. That is a heck of a catch. Look watch, at this. Watch the right hand. Watch the right hand. Falling down, one-handed, right hand. Off his knee and then into his belly. <laughs> oh, and then cradle it with the left hand. Oh, everything is going right for Arizona. 
You know, and that was the first deep throw of the night for Arizona. 88 offense, five yard penalty. Motion with Simmons, a 45 yard circus catch by Kreiner. He's got eight catches for 129 yards. Well, you see the pieces I'm talking about with this offense. Grigsby, when he's going, the big play from the backfield. And then when you add the deep threat with Kreiner out there, with everything else Foles can do with the accuracy of the intermediate passing game, this offense becomes really, really special. Yeah, they have a lot of weapons. They have to stay healthy. And Foles is clearly, clearly a guy that matured in the offseason and has a lot of confidence. Goes to the fullback, and that was tipped right off his fullback's hands, and it ends up being intercepted by Deontay Morrow. You cannot blame that one on Nick Foles. Tiny Tutogi had it right in his hands, and it bounced off. Yeah, Tutogi had it right to him. It was a softly thrown ball, a little high, but this is when you ought to handle. Right there, had to reach up a little high, couldn't get it, and there's the play. But you so the first mistake it. of the night, first turnover for Arizona. Uh, you know, actually, on that replay, I take that back. That ball was thrown much higher than Tatogi could get up there for. So Foles, not so accurate there, no. and it was costly. Yeah, I, I, I do put that one on Foles. Thomas, and Thomas is wrapped up. Right away, Justin Washington, who's had a good night. And Foles a little upset with himself on the phone. That's the only thing he has to be upset with tonight. Yeah, that one's on him. And if he has one weakness, it is mobility and throwing on the move. Yeah, he's a six foot five. Yeah, big and that's guy. typical of guys that are six five, six six, and you know, trying to throw on the move. The six foot six two guys you know, typically don't have that much trouble with it. They have better feet. Well, speaking of which, by the way, the irony here, he went to the same high school as Drew Brees. Yeah. <laughs> Polar opposites in terms of physical stature. Thomas now reversing field. Can he get to the edge? No. Thomas tripped up by Joe Perkins. Well, how about speed? How about speed? Thomas couldn't get to the edge because Perkins and company in the Arizona secondary have it's great speed. Like you know, if this defense continues to play like this for Arizona, might this be the year? Might this be the first time Arizona gets to a Rose Bowl? The drought. Last year, they were a double overtime loss away. That game against Oregon, they lost it 44 to 41. They would have been there with the tie break in what was. A pack 10 that came down to the end. That is incomplete. As he was trying to get it to Danny Noble. And then the punt team will come on. Could this be the year? I, I think the pack 10 is wide That's open. I think most would agree that Oregon, Oregon appears to be a cut above. But it is a wide open Pac-10, with the exception really of obviously Washington State and Arizona State seems to be trying to get on the upswing. You just have a lot of teams muddled there that have a lot to like, but everybody's got to fall. Yeah, some somebody's going to have to find a way to put it together, and that one area might be defense. We know it's a great offensive conference, great quarterbacks, but who can play a little defense? Right lets it bounce, and it ends up taking a Toledo bounce. Now for our playing favorites brought to you by Pizza Hut. We saw it moments ago. Foles to Kreiner time and time again. Jerron Kreiner having himself a big night with eight catches for 129. But the one that we just saw moments ago. How about that? Yeah, he has been Foles favorite target all night long. And Kreiner has responded with some spectacular plays. Big and physical go-to guy. Here's Antolin now. The flag comes in at the line of scrimmage. Isaiah Ballard able to make the tackle against Keola Antolin. Holding. Offense number 55. 10-yard penalty. First down. That's the second time on the Tuanua 
has had that issue. How about Kreiner's night? Ten attempts his way, eight reception, 129 yards, and a spectacular, spectacular catch, one-handed falling down. Ron Kreiner, they really need him to play like that consistently this year. Foles steps up in the pocket and gets it over the middle to the 35-yard line to Dave Roberts. The only tough spot has been some of the offensive line play. Ami Tuani has had two holding calls tonight, including the one in the end zone for the safety. And he's a converted tight end, actually even played some defensive tackle earlier in his career. Now the starting left guard for these Wildcats. And Anselin wrapped up by Damian McIntosh. <laughs> Coming to the end of this third quarter. First Pac-10 team to come and play at a Mac school. As Mike Stoops, Ohio native himself, takes Arizona East for the first time since a bad loss at Penn State in 99. And everything's coming up the way they want so far. Fourth quarter ahead. The NASCAR Nationwide Series at Atlanta, Saturday at 6.30 Eastern on ESPN2. Oh. Wow, that guy's really staring over here. Must have sold him some carpeting or something. Mike, check out his bacon neck. Bacon? Sir, lean forward and show Michael Jordan your collar. Oh, see how it's all curled up like bacon in a pan? See how bad this dude looks? What's that? Thank you. Okay. Not us, though, buddy. I lay flats. We're like twins. No, we're not. Yeah, we are. No, we're not. Yeah. The lay flat collar. Lays flat, won't bacon. Only from Haynes. Sandwich late at 2 o'clock. Oh. oh. Hey. 550. Actually, we're all good today, sandwich lady. We love your chicken sandwiches, but Taco Bell's got chicken flatbread sandwiches for under a buck. So. 550. No, 550. Under a buck. You don't scare me. It's under a buck, and not everyone's happy about it. The new chicken flatbread sandwich. Warm flatbread, flame-grilled chicken, and melty cheese. Only at Taco Bell. Why pay more? Yeah! Always getting attention. But some of you still don't know quack about... Ah, flack! So I'll serve it up. If you get sick or hurt, Aflac pays you cash fast to help pay for things major medical insurance doesn't, like rent, car payments, and groceries. Aflac! <gasps> get up, it's chicken. It's time for a general knowledge quiz. You know what training for trial starts? Summer. You know what that means? You better be ready. You know what these are? Hyper dunks. You know what else they are? Light. You know what that makes you? Quicker. You know what they help you do? Win. You know what winning gets you? Props. You know who likes props? Girls. You know who else likes props? Coaches. You know what coaches choose? Teams. You know who can do this? Me. And if you listen up, you. cordless multi-tool the power and versatility of six tools packed into one more innovation more great values craftsman trust in your hands Ahead on Sports Center, North Carolina's football season off to a terrible start, and they don't play till tomorrow. We'll tell you where to find the first big upset of the first Saturday of the college football season. And Ben Roethlisberger has his suspension reduced, and Steelers still have some quarterback trouble. It's all coming up after the game. No dream night for Coach Tim Beckman in Toledo. 
said, hey, we're a very young football team. Half the team coming into the program since he's been here for 18 months, and that's been the case tonight. Trying to hang around with a loaded Pac-10 offense. Third and eight for Nick Foles and the Cats. Nwoko, the running back, glances his way and then goes to Kreiner, his favorite target. And Kreiner has it out to the 50-yard line and another first down. For as well as the Arizona offense has played lately, what about the Arizona defense? I mean, yeah, look at the scoreboard. Oh, yeah, they've just done a tremendous job tonight. And remember, this is a young defense that they have out there. All three linebackers yep. new to the field. Two Juco transfers. Nwoko on the delayed inside handoff. And the sophomore from Texas charging ahead to the 46. You know, I might give Foles the rest of the night off now. Yeah, he's played a lot, had a great ball game. I, I'd be inclined to get Scott in the ball game, give him some reps, and let Foles rest up for next week. Keep him healthy. To pass on second and seven. And he connects with Douglas, but Douglas is taken down right away by Ballard. Let's look at the road ahead for Arizona. Citadel next week. And then comes a big one oh, on yeah. September 18th. Yeah, they have a stretch there. The Iowa game is at home for them. California will come calling Oregon State. That's the nice stretch for them. But the road games are tough at UCLA, at Stanford, at Oregon. And in the home finale with Arizona State, that's a tough road schedule. Pac-10 is so competitive. Then you put a top-10 Iowa team into the mix. That's a good snag right there. Oh. Oh, great well thrown ball oh. and a good catch by Travis Cobb as Desmond Morrow was all over Cobb and somehow Foles was able to get it into him. Nothing wrong with anything anybody did on that play. Great throw, great catch, great coverage. It was great coverage yeah. by Morrow. It was just pinpoint accuracy from Foles. And what a nice grab by Cobb. No, I think I'm looking for the other Cobb to have a big weekend in my fantasy football. Randall Cobb. <laughs> Foles, oh. Kreiner, how about it? Jerron Kreiner continues to just amaze tonight. A 32-yard touchdown. Kreiner is on fire with 11 catches for 187 yards. Well, I thought the one-handed catch was pretty good. This is not bad at all either. Look at that, over the shoulder. Much like an outfielder running away from home plate. Look at him chase this down. What a tremendous grab. Great concentration. I thought game one of the season, offenses are supposed to be a little slow and trying to find themselves. Yeah, yeah, defense is supposed to be ahead, yeah. They're going to take a look at this catch by Kreiner. Arizona has 432 yards of offense tonight. Foles is throwing a really good ball, isn't yeah. he? Well, we're seeing the deep ball that was missing last year. And that looks good all the way around. He has the catch. His body is in bounds. Looks like he has complete possession. Two hands, pull it in, holding on to it. Nothing out of bounds. That looks clean all the way. But it, it, it's good to see Arizona add this component back After to the offense. After further review, ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. I smell a Jerron Kreiner call out in your Friday fantasy football at some point this season. Oh, uh, he's going to get some activity. We're going to find a week to get him in the lineup. There are a lot of good players out there. I was dying to use this weekend. Jerron Kreiner, last year nine touchdown receptions. Tonight, 187 yards, 11 catches. That's a high snap. And now just scrambling, trying to make something of it, was the punter, Keenan Cryer. Now they can laugh about it when it's 34 to 2. Nick Foles, a night to celebrate. Jerron Kreiner wants many more on the road ahead. Wildcats rolling here in Toledo. I think that we've made a breakthrough.
And I wanted to show you guys a couple of things. There's a better way to fight flakes. New Garnier Fructis Anti-Dandruff Shampoo. Fights flakes for 48 hours. Guaranteed. focus on winning if they're hungry. Yeah, and we're always hungry. So I take them to their favorite place, Pizza Hut. We love this new Big Italy pizza. It's almost two feet of their favorite pizza for just 12 bucks. This thing is so big, even we couldn't knock it all down. Kind of like your open jumpers? What? Pizza Hut's new Big Italy pizza is bigger than two mediums combined. It's only $12 with up to three of your favorite toppings. And for a limited time, get a free two-liter Pepsi Max when you buy any two-liter Pepsi. The new Big Italy pizza, only $12 and only at your Pizza Hut. Everything I've done, I've had good cause to do. But I've never jeopardized an operation in my life. Roger Ebert raves. The American is gripping. Four stars, a labyrinth of seductions. Perhaps you do not have a woman in your life. Secrets and suspense. Someone tracked me down. It's some of the best work George Clooney has ever done. And what side are you on? The American. Rated R, now playing. Smallville Season 9 on Blu-ray and DVD. A villain from Krypton threatens Clark's powers. I know my destiny. You're about to learn what it feels like to get burned. Packed with amazing extras. Smallville Season 9 on Blu-ray and DVD September 7th. College game day Saturday. Urban Meyer back on the sideline for the Gators. Don't miss what drove him away and what brought him back to his chosen profession. Garrett Gilbert thrown into the fire in the BCS title game. Find out what he says had his head spinning against the tide. Plus, the bar's been set high by our past guest celebrity pickers. See if one of Atlanta's own can live up. College game day starts at 9 on ESPNU and then 10 on ESPN. All right, Reese, so tomorrow morning you can join Chris Lee, Kirk Desmond, and a celebrity guest. I don't know who it's going to be tomorrow morning. Here's the results from last year, the celebrity pickers on game day. Hey, Arizona guy in the mix there. Hey, hey, the Brewski, Teddy Brewski, you know, Arizona Desert Swarm right up there, besting Phil Knight. We're going to give him the push against Phil Knight because his team is playing tonight. Lane Kiffin, 7-3. That was a strange USC game last night, speaking of Lane Kiffin, wasn't it? Yeah, very odd, but I'll say this. Remember we talked about quarterbacks? How about the sizzling start for Pac-10 quarterbacks? Matt Barkley last night, Nick Foles tonight. Pretty significant. They both have grown up a lot in the offseason, and you're seeing the results here. Here's Williams, Morgan Williams for Toledo. Let's look at our protection spotlight brought to you by Castrol GTX. Uh, this would make Teddy Bruski proud. Not quite death is warm, but this defense has done a great job tonight. How do you protect a shutout? And it is a shutout. They didn't give up the safety. You knock down the ball. You get a pick. And then when, Arizona, when Toledo had a chance to score, first down at the Arizona 8, four plays gained only four yards. Kept him out of the end zone. You saw Paul Vasavo there and the new face, Jonathan McKnight, for a moment. And that those were the question marks where the linebackers, you know, replacing three linebackers. David Fluell in the running back with Danton now. Dan's going to keep it himself. And he goes straight ahead out towards the 40 yard line. Take a look at. The defense last year for Arizona gave up almost 24 points a game. Tonight, <laughs> a little bit better. Rushing, they've given up nothing. Pretty good night, but you can bet the coaches will not be happy with the way that they struggled with the screen passes, some of the misdirection, and Toledo was able to do that on them early on, but they kept them out of the end zone. Bellinger now coming around the fly sweep and just trying to dance back to the original line of scrimmage. To me, this is a faster Arizona defense than they had last season. Told you, Greg Brown and Tim Kish split 
the duties as defensive coordinators. Yeah, interesting. They've got four coordinators on the Arizona staff. Mike Stoops said, yeah, if you can get rid of your ego, you can have co-coordinators. He did it with, for his brother at Oklahoma. Bill Mark Stoops, his brother, left to become the defensive coordinator with Jimbo Fisher at Florida State. Danton gets it to Fluellen. He's out I, to the 45. I thought that was interesting what Mike Stoops had to say about Mark Stoops leaving. He said, you know, people don't understand how much pressure there is when you coach for your brother. And, and it's not the pressure your brother puts on you. It's your own pressure because you want to do so well for your brother to make him proud. He understood what kind of pressure his brother Mark was feeling because he felt the same when he was a D coordinator for Bob at Oklahoma. Of course, he was a defensive coordinator winning a national title <laughs> at Oklahoma. So he had the results. And this is batted down by Ricky Elmore. Ricky Elmore and Brooks Reed, the two defensive ends for Arizona, number 44 and 42. That is a heck of a combination they have. Well, you got to be able to rush the quarterback, particularly in the Pac-10. You got to be able to put pressure on the quarterback because it is a quarterback-rich conference. And if you can't bring any heat, you're not going to win ball games. You got to get big plays on defense. You got to get takeaways, and you have to sack the quarterback. John Penza back out to punt. Penza has three punts over 50 yards. He is responsible for the two points on the board as he pinned Arizona earlier in this game, and then a safety ensued. And the fair catch at the 18. It has been the Wildcats night. We'll see if Foles stays in there. Rethink possible. Are things different now that I'm not crushing quarterbacks every Sunday? Yeah, a little bit. But I still have a taste for greatness. So I love Dr. Pepper. The taste of these 23 flavors can never be equal. Like me. Pizza Perfect Nab. I got it. Donovan. Mike? Who is Mike? Ah! Oh. Oh. Come on, Mike, man. You still got it. There's nothing like a pepper. Trust me. I've sent people to the doctor. Oh. Les Miles and Butch Davis both hope to open with a marquee win in the return of Saturday Night Football. LSU, North Carolina, Saturday at 8 on ABC. Do a little dance over to the Men's Warehouse Labor Day Sale. For the first time ever, you can buy one, get one free on all suits, shirts, slacks, shoes, designer jeans. Sale ends Monday. You're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. If you have diabetes and you're on Medicare, call now to get the new talking meter. These new meters are more accurate, they're easier to use, and the best news is you don't have to prick your fingers anymore. Areva makes it simple. They bill Medicare directly. There are no upfront costs. And they deliver your supplies right to your door for free. For more information, call 1-800-764-0977. Do a little dance over to the Men's Warehouse Labor Day Sale. For the first time ever, you can buy one, get one free on all suits, shirts, slacks, shoes, designer jeans. Sale ends Monday. You're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. I'm Reese Davis with your Sports Center right now. Ben Roethlisberger's suspension has been cut from six games to four by NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell. Roethlisberger suspended for violating the NFL's conduct policy. And North Carolina has a couple of its linebackers back in the fold. Juan Sturdivant and Bruce Carter, both starters, cleared to play against LSU. That means 13 heels will miss the opener. Sports Center is on ESPN News right now, and it also follows the game. Thanks, Reese. Well, Nick Foles' evening is over, and I think he's earned the right to sit back and watch Matt Scott. And Scott, he's able to connect with Gino Crump. 
Well, Nick Foles has done a wonderful job tonight. He's done it every which way. Complete accuracy, a deep ball, nice touch ball into the corner of the end zone for Douglas. Kreiner has been his primary target all night. And just for good measure, he ran one into the end zone. Capped his night with this perfect throw to Kreiner for a touchdown. Nwoko now. He's the power back in this Arizona offense. Well, remember his last game out on the field? That disastrous Holiday Bowl against Nebraska. 28 yards. How about 360 against Toledo? Yeah, I guess uh, he's in no hurry to face Indomitian Sue. Yeah. He's not far up the road there in Detroit. Of course, Nick Foles was just 90 minutes up the road at Michigan State before transferring to Arizona. Scott downfield and he connects with Bud Wright. And Matt Scott is not a bad option. Well, he was the starter last season, remember? First uh, three games of the season, he beat out Nick Foles. He was very sharp in the spring game as well, had 238 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Yeah. And he had the misfortune of playing Iowa, starting against Iowa back there, and uh, had a rough go of it. And the following week, they went to Nick Foles, and Foles never gave the spot back. He's moving the offense right down the field as easily as Foles did. Woko now. Straight ahead to the 27. A reminder that the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Atlanta is Sunday at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. I wonder if Mark Martin and Jamie McMurray can both get off the bubble or if only you know you've been known to be a very good NASCAR handicapper I tend to go for the racing of yeah. equines turning left but you've been known to handicap the boys of summer pretty well I'm a closet fan I watch out of your out of your vision second and two now Woko easy go of it for the first down and to the 17 yard line he's taken down by Archie Donald Matt Scott in at quarterback for Nick Foles. You know, Matt Scott openly talked about transferring rather than sitting behind Foles, but he says he feels a commitment to the program. And he feels that he's actually grown under the new quarterback coach, Frank Selfo, but that it's tough for a young man. I mean, listen, everybody's got an ego. You're a big man on campus. You were the starting quarterback, yeah. and now you got a guy in Nick Foles in front of you who's going to be a pro prospect. That's a, that's a tough decision to make. Oh, well, he also said it's a hassle to move. Here is Scott. He's known as a good running quarterback, but he was swamped by T.J. Fatinikin. Also, Dan Moles, the middle linebacker, getting in the mess there. Yeah, we sometimes forget about these young men and what they deal with at school. And, you know, Scott said, you transfer, you got to pack up all your stuff. You got to move somewhere else. You got to learn a new system. He said, who wants to do, deal with that hassle? Yeah, you know, I give him credit. He's only 19 years old, and he's already figured out something that's uh, great in life. Don't move off. Don't it. <laughs> it's a pain. <laughs> Or that's what, that's what a lot of pizza and six packs are for for your friends to come over and move you move you Low snap Is able to connect to the 10 yard line and host of Toledo defenders in against Terrence Miller. He's got three for three You know Nwoko has had a couple carries on this series. He's another important part of this offense because they struggle in short yardage and he's the only big back that they have that can get that stuff for him. Yeah, he goes 6'2", 220 compared to Grigsby and Antolin, 5'10", 5'8", yeah. buck 80 kind of guys. And they were not good last season inside the red zone and goal line. They need somebody that's a big thumper other than Grigsby as a scat kind of back. Third and three, another low snap. And another completion to Geno Crump right at that line to make. Yeah, and see, right now, if this is a first down, I, I think they start handing the football to Nwoko. You know, get him some work, start working on this short yardage situation, place where they struggled last year, pound the football, get used to that a little bit. Now, this is turning into the perfect opening game for Arizona because all your stars played like stars, and now you get to accomplish some things that you really want to work on with some of your backup players like Nwoko and Scott. Scott to the end zone, overthrows Crump. 
Yeah, see, I, I, I get what they're doing. You know, let Scott have some work, throw the ball around a little bit. But for my money, I, I want to run the ball a little bit. I want to get some work with my big back, my big offensive line. Let them, let them pound it out. Let them, let them run at it some. They haven't had a chance to do an awful lot of that. And you're going to need this guy during the course of the season. Missed all of spring practice with Woko. Had a shoulder injury, had off-season surgery. Gets the call here now, but cannot shake free. As he was tied up. Alex Johnson. Yeah, that worked him. Give it to him again. You know, that's, that's what happens during the season. You get third and short, and you got to pick it up a couple times. You know, get, give it back to him. Between the tackles, short yardage, red zone, bruising back tight. Stay in on third and goal. But he's joined by Antolin now, who's in motion for Scott. And he looks his way. Keola Antolin trying to spin free, and he does. Another score for Arizona. Byron Best was bested by Keola Antolin. Uh, who needs a big back when your small back can deliver a pop like that and break a tackle? They have a lot of weapons, Rod. Yeah, a yeah, lot do. of weapons. When all three of these backs are healthy, watch him deliver the blow. He doesn't accept it. He lowers the shoulder and shakes that off. Just lowers the shoulder and shakes off best. And a big hug from Nick Foles. And the beat goes on for Arizona. Scott, five of six, 53 yards, and the touchdown. Here is Thomas. Big weekend of college football. You're going to be working the goal line channel tomorrow from, I believe, noon till midnight. I think <laughs> yeah. we may get you like a five-minute break in there, but Sorry, if it's dude. available to you on your uh, cable or satellite, look out for the goal line channel. All the games going around monitoring the whole yeah. day. You got any upsets out there? Is there anything that catches your attention tomorrow? I, I don't know about that, but I know about that Oregon State TCU game. I'm, I'm excited about that one. I want to see Ryan Katz, quarterback, Oregon State. You know, the good news for him is that he gets to start. The bad news is he's facing a great defense. And I think Andy Dalton, it's a great stage for him. People, people underestimate him as a quarterback at TCU. So much attention, of course, being put on the Monday game between Boise and Virginia Tech. But, I mean, TCU, they get past yeah. Oregon State. They go into the Mountain West. You know, grab a very good win now against Utah based on what Utah did last night against Pitt. Who's to say that TCU won't be the team we're talking about? And just like Boise, TCU is now starting with a much higher ranking than the BCS non-automatic qualifying teams ever had. I, I think that's a better deal for TCU. They're sort of high enough but under the radar because everyone's fo focusing on Monday's game, Boise State and Virginia Tech. But TCU, almost a home game with Oregon State, can get off to a great start with a big win, and they could be on their way. Now Arizona well on their way to what could be a very promising season. Never made it to the granddaddy of them all. Could this be the year and what many say is a wide open Pac-10 up on top? Oregon's got a lot of talent returning. Of course, we'll see what they get for quarterback play. We know what Arizona's gotten with quarterback play tonight. Danton is wrapped up right away as Jake Fisher came in. Jake Fisher, who was a true freshman a year ago and played in all 13 games, but now he is the starter. They're going to ask a lot of Jake Fisher this year, this Arizona defense. Well, he's a versatile guy. You know, he can play in that nickel and dime 5-6 defensive back situation, and he can cover, but he's a tough run supporter. He helps give them a lot of speed on that defense. I think this Arizona defense is a lot faster than what they had last season. A lot of questions had to be answered tonight, and they have answered them. Bernard Reedy, he is chased down by Marquise Flowers. Well, Flowers made the play, but did you see Fisher show his lateral movement and speed getting out there, forcing the play right to Flowers? A 
Mike Stoops still coaching them up. Reminder that once we're finished up here in Toledo Sports Center, we'll be coming up. All the talk of what's going on with North Carolina on the night before their big game with LSU. Who's in, who's out on that star studded defense as the NCAA investigations have taken their toll on that program. Plus, the story with Ben Roethlisberger and his suspension being reduced. Meanwhile, in terms of college football and a premier quarterback, Jeremiah Masoli Rod, yeah. his appeal went through and he will be playing for Ole Miss this year. his punt right fields it at the 21 gets by a defender and out to the 34 well we asked you to name that year it was the leap by the lake Ortez Jenkins Arizona's big victory to go 5 and 0 come from behind and beat Washington what year was that Rod 1998 come on. 98 yeah, we knew that one you know, they went on to win the Holiday Bowl that year against Nebraska. Yeah, yeah that, that was a 12 and 1 season. Dick Tomey was the head coach there. Probably had his best overall team. As good as some of the, the great defensive squads they had. You know, just pure desert swarm. That, that team, probably the most talented offensive team he'd had during his tenure there. Daniel Jenkins. He gets the call now. Of course, one of the big games, Rod, that you'll be talking about tomorrow on your goal line channel is this one on ABC College Football presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. UConn just up the road from us against Michigan. UCLA, Kansas State will also be in regional action. You can go to ESPN.com. Just search maps if you want to find out the game that you are going to get in your